What is a cell? A cell is the smallest unit that makes up all living things. Do you know the common parts of a cell? In this video, we are going to take a closer look at the nucleus, cell membrane, cytoplasm, endoplasmic reticulum or ER, mitochondria, ribosomes, lysosomes, vacuoles, and other organelles. A short exercise is provided towards the end of this video. So stay with me and let's get going. Study the images below. Here you have a plant cell and an animal cell. Do you notice the difference in shape? A plant cell has a cell wall, but an animal cell doesn't. The cell wall is the tough outer layer of the cell, which contains cellulose. It provides strength and support to the plant, maintaining its shape and preventing it from bursting in a hypotonic environment. It is when the solute concentration outside the cell is less than the inside. A plant cell and an animal cell have a cell membrane, which acts as a barrier controlling the movement of substances in and out of the cell. The cell membrane is semi-permeable. It is very selective as to which molecules can pass through more easily than others and only allows the entry of nutrients while harmful substances are discharged from the cell. What do you know about the cytoplasm? The cytoplasm is a gel-like substance within the cell where organelles are suspended. It is where many of biochemical reactions occur. Let's talk about the nucleus. The nucleus contains the DNA, which stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, the cell's genetic material. The nucleus also controls the cell's activities, including growth, metabolism, and reproduction. Do you still remember the organelle known as the powerhouses of the cell? That's right, the mitochondria. A mitochondrion is a singular form of mitochondria, and it derives from Greek roots mitos, meaning thread, and chondrion means tiny granule. This particular tiny granule is an organelle, a part of a cell with an extremely specialized function. In the case of a mitochondrion, its main job is taking in food and producing energy. This is precisely why it's called the powerhouse of the cell. Have you ever heard of the endoplasmic reticulum? The endoplasmic reticulum, or ER, is a large dynamic structure that serves many roles in the cell, including calcium storage, protein synthesis, and lipid metabolism. It comes in two forms. One is the rough ER, where the surface is studded with ribosomes, which appears rough. While the other does not have these ribosomes, so it appears smooth, known as the smooth ER. The rough ER synthesizes and secretes proteins in the liver, hormones, and other substances in the glands. Smooth ER transports the products of the rough ER to the cellular organelles, especially the Golgi complex or the Golgi apparatus. Basically, the Golgi complex or Golgi apparatus modifies, sorts, and packages proteins and lipids for transport to their destination within or outside the cell. What do you know about the ribosomes? The ribosomes are responsible for translating encoded messages from messenger RNA molecules to synthesize proteins from amino acids. It assembles amino acids to form essential proteins to carry out cellular functions. Not only do cells have powerhouses, but they also have organelles that function as the digestive system of the cell. These are the lysosomes. Lysosomes contain digestive enzymes and hydrogen ions that break down lipids, carbohydrates, and proteins into small molecules 
that the rest of the cell can use. They are also involved in breaking down organelles that have outlived their usefulness. Let's talk about the vacuoles. Both plant and animal cells have vacuoles. A plant cell contains a large, singular vacuole that is used for water storage and maintaining the shape of the cell. In contrast, animal cells have many smaller vacuoles for many reasons. One is storage. Smaller vacuoles can store various substances such as nutrients, waste products, and ions in different compartments. This helps the cell manage and organize its resources more efficiently. Another reason is regulation. Having multiple smaller vacuoles can regulate the cell's internal environment more effectively because different vacuoles can maintain different pH levels and ion concentrations that helps in cellular homeostasis. The third reason is transports. Having smaller vacuoles are also helpful for transport because smaller vacuoles can easily move around the cell. Another reason is flexibility. Smaller vacuoles provide structural flexibility which allows the cell to change shape and adapt to its environment. Try to answer the guide questions. Number one, in a cell, where does protein synthesis take place? Number two, what organelles are responsible for breaking down things? Number three, what do you call the gel-like substance within the cell? And number four, which of the following is found in plant cells but not in animal cells? Here are your choices. Vacuole, mitochondria, cell wall, or ribosomes. And lastly, identify the given organelle. You can always pause this video if you need more time to think. But if you're ready, let's go ahead and check your answers. Let's start with the first one. Protein synthesis takes place in the ribosomes. For number two, the organelles responsible for breaking down things are the lysosomes. And number three, the gel-like substance within the cell is called the cytoplasm. I think number four is quite obvious. The cell wall can be found only in plant cells, but not in animal cells. And the organelle in number five is the mitochondrion or mitochondria. So, how well did you answer all the questions? I am certain you did great.